YouTube. How is everybody doing? Today I'm going to show you how to make string blocks. These are woven. I'm going to try them both straight and then on the diagonal and we will see how they turn out. Uh, the ones that I've already made are very very colorful and let me turn the camera around and I will get set up and we'll get started. Here is, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I'm in frame so you can see me, and I apologize about the wires. Um, I'm not set up in my studio presently. My husband and I are going to work at overhauling the studio, and then we will take all of my quilting endeavors back over there where I have um, the video and audio and lighting on a trestle that works much better than sitting here in my library. So, these blocks are woven. I'm gonna bring them up closer to you so you can see them. You can see I've sewn down the center of the pieces, but they are all raw edge. You can see the little pinked edges here. And this is just stuff that most people would toss out. They are on a foundation sheet. Uh, this is a piece of muslin. My supplies for this are right here. I'll take a handful out and we'll look at them. These are strings that are really too thin to piece together. And for my um, charity quilts, I've been taking apart men's cotton shirts and cutting them up for fabric. I'll do a video with that soon uh, but again just real thin pieces and the scraps from the men's shirts uh, here's a nice long piece it's a seam it still has a bit of a raw edge to it and it will fray a little bit for us anyway when we uh, throw everything in the wash machine when the piece is done I'm not quite sure what the life will be of these blocks, but we have three of them so far. And basically when this basket starts overflowing, I make more. So these are uh, eight and a half, I think. Let's see. Yes, they're eight and a half inch unfinished. We'll make one that is straight first. What I am going to do is I'm going to lay out pieces of shirting or fabric, whatever fabric I have in that basket is game. And I'm going to cut it so it's slightly longer than the block. Overhang it a wee bit so we have coverages of the edges. Here we've got a fun stripe. And it doesn't matter if uh, this has a salvage on it. That doesn't matter. It's fine. Can you see clearly? I think you can. I hope you can. I've got all these lights plugged in here, but it just doesn't seem to be lighting things up well enough. So We'll get back in the groove soon. This is also a really good use of salvages. And you don't have to be super accurate with this. We will have opportunities to move things around. You can use strips of things that you've done for other projects. And that looks like it'd be a fun one. a nice fuzzy piece and it's still you can see where the serger went over the seams and that's perfectly fine we're looking for variety here's another fun piece I 
again this was a seam from a man's shirt more from a man's shirt more from a man's shirt most of this is man's shirt I take I go to Salvation Army and get get the shirts so that'll work if there's a really nice piece that you're wanting to use you can always just quickly sew two of them together just finger press this doesn't really matter too awful much and then we can cut a piece that's long enough and we can cut this into several strips there is no need to use a ruler if they're a little wonky that's fine that gives the block more interest have that. All right, let's line things up here. We want them to be close, but not overlapping. This way, when you're weaving the rest of them in, this will, uh, you, you won't end up seeing the muslin in the back. sure that they bump up against each other and again if they're a little wonky that's fine that will add a lot more interest fun with the little numbers on it. Okay, so we're going to carefully line up the bottoms so that they're all butting up against each other. just going to rotate it underneath the sewing needle Don't panic if they go astray. It's no, no biggie. I'm just trying to lock them down. And you can leave the frayed edges. That's perfectly fine. We want this to fray. Okay, get the last piece. Okay, there we go. So now you have something that looks like this. We've sewn about a quarter inch or so away from the edge. And now you're just going to start the weaving process. So we can do that. That looks good. Uh-oh, the cats are fighting. So I'm going to butt this right up to that sewn line. So maybe 
maybe if I flip this around and work upside down, it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I'm just holding it with my hand, flipping every other one out of the way. This would be a great block to do while you're listening to an audio book or some music. And we just sew this down. Let me see if my other camera will give you a better angle. It may give you a better angle, but there's no microphone on it. So guess who's doing a voiceover? At this point, I'm just picking up every other strip and laying another one down and then doing the exact opposite with the next strip. I will speed up the rest of this video until I decide to switch back to the camera with the microphone. Oh, we're almost done. Right now it looks like a hot mess, but we'll get it trimmed down and you'll be able to see how cute these things are. And it's a great way to not fill up the landfill with fabric scraps. There are some scraps that I even I won't keep, but I do like to use what I've got and I do like to use the men's cotton shirts for charity quilts because that fabric is put together a lot stronger than quilting fabric and it holds up better to constant washing with charity quilt excuse me with charity quilts you know for a hospital cancer ward or chemo center those quilts have to be washed in very very hot water uh, daily and the shirts will hold up to that better than the um, the quilting fabric there's only so much abuse you can put on that before it really starts falling apart on you I'm not not saying that this quilt would end up there but uh, you know because it's going to be not as sturdy as something that's sewn traditional ways but this will add a lot of interest and I think for like a memory center or something along those lines it would be very very interesting texture and to look at all the different pieces of fabric Okay, 
We're almost done. A few more inches to go. That would take care of it. In fact, I think it's a bit too wide. But we shall see, YouTube. We shall see. Okay. Last piece here. Let me give this a quick quick press and I will square it up. Okay, here is our finished block. I can hold it up. And there you can see it. It's all trimmed up. You can tell that the, the muslin does, you know, get kind of sucked in when you're sewing everything down. But that's fine. This is plenty sturdy and it will look great next to all the rest of them. You can use a nice black uh, sashing in between them if you like to make them all stand out and then you're going to have a great little fidget quilt and then you can also sew the other items. You could sew the button placards for the shirts. I do have some let me show you. You might have to do some finagling, but you might be able to sew down a button placard from one shirt and the button holes from another. And if you sew them both to flaps so they're kind of sitting on top of the quilt, on top of the block, block like that, then you might be able to have enough fabric where you can I'll let them actually button it together. So, and then, you know, then it'd be something for them to, again, fidget with. And you can do pockets, you could do uh, the cuffs. Pockets would be nice to put little devotions or uh, messages. So I was thinking of trying to see what would happen if I attempted to make one of these on point and by on point I mean starting with a piece that goes going this way that might be quite interesting so we can attempt that and see how that goes Carefully pivot this and go down this end. Okay. It wasn't too painful. 
not too painful at all to sew that down. You just need to get the, the very base secured and then it's going to be the same way as when uh, we had it going vertical and, and horizontal as opposed to diagonal. And now is the time where you can use up a lot of your shorter pieces on these here edges. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. I do have a lot of these little short pieces here. So we're going to go under this one. And under this one. This may not work, it may be a complete flop, but it's perfectly fine. 24 hours later. Hello YouTube, I have come back. I had to think after yesterday, after yesterday's video on how better to make the, uh, the diagonal block and I had started uh, from down here in um, both corners and it made it kind of difficult to get the edges correct so I, it's a little uh, curvy here and I had to think on it and I thought I'd come up with a better way of putting together one of these woven blocks on the diagonal we are going to start in the middle this time and then we're going to build out from the center. So we're going to go up this way, starting with just the center one. And then the next one that we do, will go under this one. And then the next one up will go on top of that. And that way I can use shorter ones okay and that one will go this direction up your real short pieces. Go, go. Space for one more. That takes care of that side. Now we'll work on this side. sew that down and we got room for one more there we go there's that one and we'll sew down that to start with
there we go now everything's locked down and we can just keep weaving so we'll fast forward through this and I'll show you the result it should result in a straighter block Sew it down. This is much easier. There we go, that's the last piece. Let me give it a pressing and trim it down. Well, here we are, YouTube. That is much straighter than 
the other diagonal one that I did, which is right here. <clears throat> this one had all sorts of curving going on, trying to weave everything in together, but this one went together real well, so I'm glad that I had a think on it, and I'm glad that I got this idea on how to do it, Start by starting in the middle. So that is that, YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all very, very soon. God bless.